right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of our Aquarium's Online Academy. My name is Tali. I'm from our education department, and I'm so excited to share a little bit of my morning with you. So today, we're going to be talking about a really cool animal. Uh, we're going to be talking about some sharks today uh, and some of um, the things we can do to help them out, some of their conservation uh, efforts as well. So I hope you're excited to learn a little bit more about sharks. Uh, now, during our programs, uh, like always, we encourage you to participate. Um, if you have any questions during our program, if you see something and you're like, hmm, I want to know a little bit more about that, you are welcome uh, to communicate with us. And there's two different ways to do it, depending on when you're watching. Um, one way to do it is if you're watching it right now, live on Friday morning, uh, you can text us in on this number right down below. It's 562 286 1838 um, if you are watching this live. If you're watching this a little bit later on after we have aired, uh, you're still welcome to ask questions. Uh, we just ask that you email us instead. That email address is right below that number. It is live at lbaop.org. So those are two ways to interact with us depending on when you are watching. Um, so I thought we would start off our program today by making some observations. That's just a fancy way to say we're going to do some learning by looking today. So I'm going to kind of wake up our brains and maybe take a look at our Shark Lagoon webcam. We have webcams around the aquarium in various exhibits, but we have a really cool one here in Shark Lagoon. Um, and I want to take a moment to make some observations. So what do you notice? Does anything stand out to you? Does anything surprise you? And also, when you're looking at our animals here, how do you know which one is the shark? How do you, what makes a shark a shark? So I'm gonna get out of the way so you can see a little bit more and we'll see what we notice about shark lagoon. I notice there's definitely some friends that are swimming, but not all of them are swimming the same, right? Of course, when I talk about it, when I talk about sharks, a lot of my sharks go off screen, but that's okay. So I noticed that our sharks here, a lot of them were swimming using their tails. There goes one of our reef sharks there. Whoa! <laughs> there's another one of our reef sharks um, but they were swimming using their tails. They're kind of swishing it back and forth. So they're mostly using their tail. Here comes another one. Using mostly its tail to get its whoa to get its momentum going forward there. And it's kind of holding its other fins, its pectoral fins, a little bit still. I like to think of them using it a little bit more like an airplane. So they're kind of going eat or eat, if they want to go kind of cruising through the water and turn this way or that way. Some of our other fish in here um, they weren't moving quite as flexible, I would say, as our sharks. Um, and some of them were using their pectoral fins to swim. So that's definitely one thing that I notice about our sharks um, versus some of our other fish that we have are in our exhibit. Now, um, another thing that I noticed that makes a, that makes a, a shark a, a fish, I should say. Sharks are fish. They're just a special type of fish. Is how they breathe. How do we breathe? We we have our nose, we have our mouth, and we have our lungs to help get air, or get oxygen, I should say, out of the air that's around us. Sharks breathe air too, but they're breathing it in the water using um, special gills on the side of their body. Ah, Miss Allie's helping me out here, by the way. Um, she used not only listening for all your questions. She's also changing all the magic that's behind me here. 
And you can see on this picture here, there's these lines on the side of the shark. Most of them have five. Let's see, one, two, three, should have five, two, one, two, three, four, five. My little picture is really tiny right now, so I'm squinting. But I'm pretty sure I count five gill slits there. Most sharks have five. And that helps them breathe the air, pull in the water over their gills, get the oxygen out of it, just like we do with our lungs. So that's one of the things that kind of makes a shark a shark. Sharks have gills, sharks have fins. Sharks also have a special skeleton on the inside. So we have hard bones in our body, right? But can we move like a shark? Are we kind of as wiggly squiggly as a shark is? Not so much. So sharks actually don't have, and you might notice that they're moving even more flexible than for say some of these other smaller fish that are in the exhibit too. They can move their tail a lot more side to side than those other fish can. And that's because of their special skeleton. So they have a skeleton that's made out of cartilage. Cartilage. Cartilage is a squishy thing that we have on our bodies too. We have it on the end of our nose. We have it on the edges of our ear. And that makes parts of our body really, really flexible. That actually makes the shark's body super flexible uh, as well. So that's another thing that helps make a shark a shark. So I hope you've been making some good observations about what makes a shark so special. And also a very special type of fish is where again, using that nice, long, flexible tail to swim towards the water here. So I think we made some good observations about sharks. And again, if you want to share what you're noticing, if you have any questions during our program, again, you're welcome to use that text line down below, 562-286-1838. So please feel free to chat with us this morning. Um, I want to take a little bit of a deeper dive uh, into some particular species of sharks, just to compare them. Because not all sharks are the same, right? They're not all the same size. They're not all the same shape. Um, so I wanted to start out um, with our zebra shark. So I'm wondering if Miss Allie can put up a picture of a zebra shark. Ta-da! This is a zebra shark. Um, now, if we take a closer look at our zebra shark here, what do we notice about this shark? And is there anything unusual about, I keep calling this thing, a zebra shark. So if you said it doesn't have stripes, I agree with you. Most times when I'm like, ta-da, it's a zebra shark. Most of my friends were like, um, Miss Talia, I, I don't know what to tell you, but um, zebras, zebras, zebras have stripes. And this, this does not have stripes at all. This in fact have like the opposite of stripes. This has. Ah, and to see another one of my friends notice that they have spots too. I agree with you. They have spots all over them. So why do we call this particular shark a zebra shark and not a leopard shark or a cheetah shark or something that, you know, makes a little bit more sense for the picture that I'm looking right, right at right now. And that has to do with how they look when they're babies. So when they're babies, oh, they're so adorable. They do have black and white stripes like a zebra. This particular shark is getting a little piece of, uh, of a snack right there on this little metal pole here, if you're wondering what's going on with this, this part of the picture here. So he's just getting a little bit of yummy, looks like shrimp for a snack there. Um, this is what they look like when they're babies. And they do have black and white stripes like a zebra. Scientists saw that and said, aha, it must be a zebra shark. But guess what? As they got older, you might notice they still have some dots even when they're babies. As they got older, those stripes stretched and stretched 
and stretched and stretched and stretched and they turned all into polka dots. So now they don't look very much like a zebra. Uh, but um, in other parts of the world, they are called a leopard shark. And that kind of makes more sense with what they look like when they're grown up. This is kind of a teenager zebra shark. This one um, is kind of in between having stripes. You can kind of still see the stripes there. And they're kind of in between having stripes and spots. And then those will stretch all into the beautiful spots that you see here. So um, other parts of the world, they're all called a leopard shark. We have a leopard shark here in California um, locally. So we didn't want to have two sharks. This is what our leopard shark here looks like in California. We didn't want to have two sharks with the same name because that would be confusing if somebody said, I really want to see the leopard shark today. I wouldn't know which one to, I wouldn't know if I'd have to send them to our local exhibits here at the aquarium or if I have to send them to the tropical exhibits where our zebra shark lives. Um, same thing with if, how would I know which one to feed if I had to go give them a snack and I had two sharks with the same name? It would be really confusing. So that's why we call it a zebra shark um, here in California. So we don't get confused with our local leopard shark here. Um, I also love that our zebra shark has little bitty teeth. So they like to eat uh, things on the bottom of their exhibit. Um, you can see also, you might notice their shape's a little bit different. Most times when I think about a shark, I think about a football shape. So it kind of has a round bottom to it and a round top to it. This one has a little bit of a flatter bottom to it. And that is great to be able to just rest on the bottom like my friend is doing here. They can rest on the bottom of the water here. They will also use their little itty bitty teeth right there to go munch for things in the sand to eat. So they love things like crabs and clams and snails and they'll use little teeth to kind of grind up um, that food, especially if it's in a hard shell that'll help them break it open. Just like we do, we want to get to the yummy meat that's inside. Also, I love in this picture, you can see their gills working really well. Now, you may have heard, wait a minute, I thought sharks needed to swim, to breathe, and this shark is clearly just taking a nap on the bottom. So what's going on? Um, it depends on the shark. It depends on how their gills are structured here. So you might notice that this shark has a little hole right behind its eye, and that helps the shark breathe when it's resting on the bottom. So it can use that to help open its gills, kind of like we don't really think about breathing. This helps them open their gills without really thinking about it. So they can rest and their gills are still working just fine. Um, well, other sharks don't really have this spiracle here and they're like a great white shark. Um, their movement through the water, that's what's opening up their gills for them. So it depends on the shark, depends on what their gills look like. Um, and you can see this one, I can definitely count one, two, three, four, five shark, uh, gill slits for our great white shark. While we're actually on this picture, I wanted to point out another thing that is cool about sharks that I hadn't mentioned, you know, in screen, so you're not seeing half of my shoulder here, um, is that they're really good at camouflaging. Our zebra shark had some good camouflage too. They had lots of dots and stuff that might blend in with the rocks that's down below them. But did you also notice, same with our great white shark here, that they are dark on the top and they're light on the bottom. And that's a special type of camouflage called counter shading. So that means they're blending in both ways. They're blending in if you're looking down at them and you're blending in if you're looking up at them. Because if you're looking down at them, they're blending in with the depths of the ocean. If you're looking up at them, they're blending in with all the sunlight that's coming down with their white belly. So that's another cool adaptation or something special that's on a shark that's in them or on them that helps them survive. So that's definitely a cool thing about sharks as well. Um, I wanted to talk about one more shark species before I get into some conservation about our sharks. Um, and I wanted to focus on a little shark that we have here in our touch pools. Because a lot of times when you think about sharks, we also think about big sharks, like our great white. Great whites get, I want to say, 22-ish feet, something like that. They're, they're a pretty big shark, but most sharks are actually about my height. I'm about five, five and change, uh, or even smaller. Um, our bamboo sharks only get about the length 
of my arm. They get about three feet or so. This is what they look like. They're another tropical shark. Um, and they also like to rest on the bottom. You can actually see in this picture really well, they have little like barbels. They have, if you think about catfish whiskers, um, they have little like whiskers on the bottom that helps them feel through the sand. They're also one of our friends who are not looking for fish in the water so much they're looking for friends in the sand to eat. This is what they look like in our touch bowls. They're so cute and adorable. Um, they are really small. They're about three feet or so. So most sharks are about under five feet, I would say. Most of them actually about the size of our bamboo sharks. So not all sharks are big. Most of them are pretty small. Uh, sharks also have a special adaptation in that they um, have really cool skin as well. So a lot of times we think about teeth in their mouth. They also have teeth on their skin. They have, whoa! dermal denticles. This is what it looks like if you took a microscope and you looked really, really close to them. I have some friends sometimes telling me this looks like a pineapple or this looks like a honeycomb or this looks like an ear of corn. And this is what their teeth look like on their skin. It's kind of made of the same stuff and it sort of acts like a suit of armor. If you've gone riding your bike, you want to wear uh, a helmet to protect yourself. That's kind of what this is doing with our shark and it helps their skin um, be a little bit more protected. So if they bump into something, they're like, oh, I'm okay. Uh, and it helps them out, which I think is super cool. And different sharks have different, different sizes and shapes to these dermal denticles. So I think that's a cool thing about sharks is they have teeth on their mouth to eat, teeth on their skin as well. Now, sharks, um, they're important, right? Why is we might want to think about, hmm, why are sharks important? Why should we care about sharks? They're cool, but do they play an important role in the ocean? And they do. Uh, one of the ways that they help out in the oceans is they help keep food chains in balance, especially the ones that do eat fish. Um, a lot of the ones that eat fish, they're going to go after easy fish, right? They're going to go after fish that are uh, sick, weak, injured, dying, something that is easier to catch um, so that they can have a snack. But what that's doing is it's making sure that the healthy fish are the one that are kind of going forward into the future. So they're really important in helping keep our food chains and our food populations and our fish populations in a nice health and balance so that there's not too much of an animal or there's not too little of an animal. Um, we can see that sometimes if we start taking sharks out of the ocean, we might notice that, huh, there's suddenly more of this certain fish or more of this little fish. And then everything kind of below that kind of gets all out of whack um, as well. So sharks are really important in helping keep those food chains uh, in balance. Uh, they do face some challenges as well. Um, a lot of times they are overfished either for um, their own products or they might get accidentally caught in a net meant for other fish. Uh, and sometimes they're just kind of tossed back um, and it's hard for them to survive that way. They do face some challenges with overfishing. Um, they also are very slow to reproduce. So a lot of times when you are taking too much out of the ocean, but you're not giving that animal a chance to um, get to an age where they reproduce. That's another challenge that uh, helps, that is um, facing sharks as well. So not only um, are there sometimes too much being taken out of the ocean, um, there's also not enough time for them to make sure that they're sharks for the future as well. So those are definitely two challenges that are helping face our sharks. Um, and again, if you have any questions during our program, you are welcome uh, to text those questions in. There's that number down below on your screen, 562-286. I'm going to get good at my backwards pointing. <laughs> 1838. Um, you guys are welcome to text in any questions about our sharks today. Um, so those are definitely some big challenges that our sharks face. So you might think, well, that seems like a tall order, right? What can we do to help out our sharks? Uh, there's definitely a lot of things we can do. First thing we can do um, is help protect them. Think, think big picture, right? So uh, first off, we might want to learn a little bit more about sharks. Where do they live? Are there special places that 
our nursery, big nursery grounds for them, big feeding grounds for them. Uh, maybe we want to preserve or protect those areas so we make sure that those are places where sharks can be safe. Um, so one of the things that we do is create things called MPAs, or Marine Protected Area. So that's kind of like having a state park underwater. So it's a, an area that says you can't fish here. There are certain rules that go into play uh, when uh, you're interacting with this area. So that's one way to help protect sharks. There's even places that are, um, I want to say, might even be, um, blue. is it Blue Corner? That's that's a shark sanctuary, Miss Allie. Miss Allie's helping me out. Yeah. So there's areas that are specifically like shark, uh, really shark safe areas as well. We have an exhibit at our aquarium here uh, modeled off the blue corner. And that island that that dive site is part of um, is considered a shark sanctuary as well. So protecting areas that sharks call their home or are special places in certain parts of their life is definitely a way to help out sharks. Um, another way to help out sharks is to learn a little bit more about them. One of the ways that scientists can do that is use special cameras um, called brubs, which are baited remote underwater videos. Basically, it is a camera on a tripod with a stick with a bag of food at the end. And scientists will set these up in different reefs to learn a little bit more about their homes. Um, so, and that way, if we know more about an area, we can know more about what types of fish live there, how many sharks live there, how do they interact with each other. And as we gain more information about these certain areas, we can our, um, better proceed forward in terms of how do you want to help them out, how do you want to protect them. So um, we can do a lot of this by using these baited um, cameras on different reefs all around the world. Um, and so even um, they have volunteers at the aquarium that even help with looking at that data. When we get the, the camera footage back, we can start helping with counting. Oh, I saw this type of fish and that type of fish and that type of shark and that type of shark. And this is how many of those types of sharks I saw um, during the video that I watched. There's ways that even us can help scientists learn more about these places. So that's definitely one way to help out. Uh, are sharks. I think Miss Allie is frantically searching for some uh, some underwater videos for me. So I'm going to give her uh, a moment to do that. This is from a uh, program called Global, excuse me, Global Fin Prints. So uh, they're an organization that we're partnered uh, with, or at least assisting with here at the aquarium. Um, so that's one way to help out our sharks. Um, another way to help out our sharks uh, something that you can do even at home, even if you don't have a computer and can't watch shark footage all day long, as fun as that would be, um, is to help out with their food. Remember we said that uh, sharks eat uh, eat fish um, and they um, help keep those fish populations in balance. So we can help keep fish populations in balance as well uh, by eating sustainable seafood. If you do eat seafood, uh, choosing fish that are uh, sustainably caught, meaning they're um, caught in a way that leaves enough out there so that again, they can have more fish in the future. Um, those are ways that we can help out our sharks and our oceans as well. Um, how do I know my fish is sustainable? Hopefully there'll be some labels on it um, that help you out. Um, you might ask your, um, your fishmonger, uh, your server at your restaurant, hey, where do your fish come from? Uh, they might know. Um, another easy way to eat sustainably is to eat locally. So eat things that are, um, if you're in the United States, that are produced in the United States or closer to your home, that's a great way to make sure that this food, when it went from the farm to my dinner plate, it didn't have to travel a really long distance of time to get to me. That's like another great way to eat um, sustainably is to eat locally. So those are some things that we can do to help out our sharks. Um, Another way we can help out sharks is to just learn a little bit more um, about them. Um, and uh, one of the sharks that I didn't know a whole lot about is a shark called a rhino ray. So I'm going to see if Miss Allie can get me up a picture Ooh, of this friend. Um, you can also call this a giant guitar fish. Um, 
I knew a type called a bow mouth guitarfish too, but this is called a rhino ray. Um, and it is one of the most critically endangered um, fish, I believe, in the world. And it doesn't get a lot of attention as much as some of our other shark friends. Um, it faces a lot of the same challenges that sharks generally do. So uh, thinking about um, being overfished, especially for uh, their meat or their fins. Um, and then again, being really slow to reproduce. So um, too much are being taken out, uh, not enough are being left in terms to make sure that we have these rays in the future. I know there's definitely some scientists and some conservation efforts to make sure that we try to protect these uh, as much as we can. Uh, but sharing information is another great way to help out our sharks. Um, and telling your friends and families about, hey, I learned this about this cool shark today. Did you ever hear of this shark before? That's another great way to help spread awareness about different animals. Ooh. I do have a question coming in asking about, are there international MPAs? There are. So uh, marine protectors, I believe, are all over the world. Um, we definitely have some in the US, um, but I believe there are some on, on many different countries and islands and coastlines um, all around the world. So I do believe it's kind of an international um, effort to make sure that we preserve different places. I want to say, oh man, I don't remember with it. Somewhere in the South Pacific, I think. Um, there's a huge MPA um, that, uh, oh man, that's going to be my homework. But yeah, there's definitely MPAs all around the world. Uh, diff Say again. Six, oh, Miss Allie helped me out. There are 65 countries around the world that have marine protected areas. That's a great question. Thank you so much for texting that in. Again, if you have any more questions, we have a few more moments um, to hang out this morning. So you're welcome to text in questions about sharks, about um, sharks and conservation, uh, please let me know. Again, that number is down below on your screen. 562-286-1838. Oh, I see we have some more. Oh, no, ah, Miss Allie is reminding me on something. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, thank you guys very much for um, hanging out and learning a little bit more about our sharks. I hope you learned a little bit more um, about kind of what we can do to help them out um, and just some cool things that make Sharks, sharks. We have a little bit of time together left, so I think I'm gonna go find something to talk about because we got some more time to talk about it. Um, so let's talk a little bit. Let's jump back to shark again. I'm gonna let my brain think for a minute about a cool, maybe a cool adaptation about our sharks. Something else I can share with you guys before I say goodbye. We'll say goodbye to our runner right there. Are super cool. We had a bow mouth guitar fish here at the ground for a while. It was amazing. It was big. It was really awesome. All right. So I want to take a moment um, to, we talked a little bit about how sharks swim using their tails. We talked about how their pectoral fins, I'll leave you with that thought, um, our pectoral fins on our sharks. Ooh, here's big guy. Hi, big guy. They don't really move that much. They're kind of steering, go, eh, eh, maybe a little bit, maybe they'll flip it a little bit this way, that way to help them steer this way or steer that way. But what about the fin on the top? That's the fin we normally think about. When you think about sharks, we think about this fin on the top coming out of the water. That's kind of our mental image of sharks. What does that help it do? It's not really easy. It's not wiggling it, right? It's not using it to swim. Um, it's actually helping keeping the shark help keep its balance. So if you look at the shape of a shark, we said it kind of looks like a football, right? Our typical, not, not quite our zebra shark, but our typical shark shape, round on the top, round on the bottom. If you throw a football, Miss Tolly's not a very good football thrower, thrower, but if you throw a football really, really well, it spins in a circle, right? It spirals. So if our sharks did not have this fin on the top of their body, they too would spiral like a football and swim like this. And that would be pretty silly. Um, so that helps our shark keep balance is this dorsal fin up top. Um, looks like we are out of time, my friends. So thank you so much for uh, spending some time with me, learning a little bit more about sharks, about some of their conservation efforts, some of the challenges that they're facing, and facing, and what are some of the things that we can do to help out uh, sharks 
uh, abroad and at home. Um, if there are any teachers watching, we encourage you to text in your number of students that are watching just so we can get a little bit an, a better idea of how many uh, folks are viewing our videos and how it can help better serve uh, those communities. So teachers, you're welcome to text in your numbers of students to this text line below here. Again, 562-286-1838. Again, thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. If you have any further questions, we ask that you email us now. Uh, and again, that email address is live at lbaop.org. Uh, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your morning. Goodbye, everybody.